Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. Okay, so it's been a little while since we covered anything Batman related that was not the Batman who laughs. And so in this video, what I wanna do is I wanna start covering the events of Nightmares. Now, Nightmares is actually a really, really cool concept in the, the Batman comics. Initially, I didn't really care anything about it, but I was like, you know what? I wanna, I wanna cover some Batman stuff. So I'm gonna go back and read Nightmares and see what's up. Maybe my mind has changed, and it did. It's actually pretty legit. Now, here's the funny thing. Normally, I explain things and make it make sense to you guys. In this video, I'm gonna kinda leave you guys hanging a little bit. And there's a reason why, right? Like, it just, like, it's, crazy so just bear with me here it's gonna be a little bit nuts but but there there's actually like there's part one and then there's part two we're technically gonna jump into part two because in reality part one just kind of it's kind of like a closing it kind of closes off from a different story right so part one ties into batman number 38 batman rebirth number 38 and in batman rebirth number 38 there was this kid named uh matthew who had basically murdered his parents and then started going through and killing parents and then blaming it on like victor zaz and 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 two-face and you didn't really find out until the and what the motivation was behind it but what you end up learning is that like when he was younger his dad always called him bruce wayne and so what he ended up doing was like calling himself bruce wayne now initially it was just kind of like okay his parents died and you assumed it was just a byproduct of trauma right like he went through and started killing other parents because of the fact that like it basically drove him nuts when his parents died and so you kind of assume that like somebody else killed his parents what uh the first nightmare story arc does is it actually shows that like matthew killed his parents because he wanted to become bruce wayne he was basically a crazy kid but it doesn't really like tie into the rest of nightmares and once we get into the end of the of the whole arc you'll understand why but what this does is initially pick up with batman just kind of like basically like in a butcher place essentially like a like a meat packing plan this is really what it kind of looks like but there's all these pigs hanging upside down and he's basically being held captive by professor pig now under normal circumstances we wouldn't really care right like we'd be like okay so professor pig whatever professor pig was a villain who would basically like kidnap people and then twist and screw up their minds and turn them into his henchmen and as far as i'm aware by and large when somebody's warped by professor pig there's really no way to bring them back and that's one of the reasons why batman like kind of starts to freak out to a degree now the other half of this and what's kind of cool is you actually get this sort of inside look into how Batman works when he's like facing off against a villain, right? Because like he's in this giant place hanging upside down. He's tied up by Professor Pig, but he doesn't know how he got there and he can't hear Professor Pig talk. But as he comes up on him with a with a, with a a knife, like of course he stabs Batman, literally tortures him and just kind of toys around with him and screws with him. Now, the reality of this is that in DC Comics behind the scenes, we never really see what Professor Pig does to people in order to like turn them into his henchmen, like his dolls basically is really what he kind of calls them. Uh, we, we've never really seen how that unfolds this kind of gives us this sort of introspective look into it in the sense of like here's what professor pig duck uh, does he just kind of tortures and warps their minds and screws them up and really seems to like kind of push them to a place where they'll do anything to make the pain stop but the cool thing about this is batman of course like breaks free and then he's like okay so like he keeps talking you know like like he's, he's talking and talking all the time they love to talk i can use that to my own ends and literally like going through and kind of giving himself this pep talk on what he needs to do on on what he what like on how he can escape this situation and it's kind of interesting because when you when you look at Batman as a character is it's almost like in some ways he seems to operate on autopilot and what this does is sort of verify that right like Batman's experience in fighting criminals is like they all seem to have the same kind of pattern right like they all love to talk they all basically want the same thing you know they they basically beg for it in terms of like the crimes that they commit you know and like you can never ever ever let them have it it's always the same thing over and over and over again they want to commit the same kind of crimes over and over and over again it's a repeating pattern now it is kind of ironic too because like when you look at Batman technically he's probably the worst superhero out there because because despite his efforts in Gotham, like Gotham is actually worse off now than it was before he was Batman, because now you have all these super criminals. So really Batman's just made Gotham worse, which is, I know it's probably gonna piss off Batman fans, but like probably because they know it's right. And so like, it's 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 kind of wonky, you know, when when it when it comes to this, but like, you know, throwing a knife at Professor Pig, basically taking him out, it's like, okay, like he should be scared here, but like, he's not scared. Why is he not scared? Like, why is he not terrified here? In turn, Batman really kind of muses with his darker side, right? Like I could kill this guy. I could kill him and be done with it. And then Gotham will be fixed. And that's kind of the, the, the factor when it comes to Batman, right? Like, technically speaking, Batman could fix Gotham City. But the reality is that, like, all the criminals in Gotham know that Batman won't kill them, right? So it's kind of like, okay, I know you won't do what needs to be done in order to stop me from being a criminal, so I'll just keep being a criminal, right? Like, because what reason do I have to stop? I know your weak point. I know what you're, I know the line you're not willing to cross. And so as long as I stay on the other side of that line, you'll be fine. Like, everything will be okay. I'll go to Arkham, and then I'll be treated for a little while, and then ultimately I'll end up escaping or, or leaving or something like that, and I'll go right back out. 
and I'll do the same thing that I always do because you're Batman and you're a half measure. You don't have the ability to do what it takes in order to make sure that like all the criminals are done. And that's kind of the funny thing about this, you know, to kind of sidetrack from the story for a second, that's kind of the funny thing about Batman. If he really wanted to save Gotham City, he would. Because sometimes the only thing you can do is look at a look at a being out there, or look at a person out there and say, they're so incorrigible and so unable to change. The only way to make the world better is to remove them from the world. And there are people who will be like, well, no, everybody deserves a second chance. You know, it's like, well, how many chances do they deserve, right? Like how many innocent people are you willing to sacrifice in order to try to make that person better? Are you willing to allow like 20 innocent people to die? 30 innocent people? Like a hundred innocent people? Like, like how many innocent people are you willing to let die in order to, to try to rehabilitate some person? And that's where Batman gets kind of, that's where it gets kind of wonky is it's like, okay, I'm Batman and sure the Joker kills people all the time and like Harvey Two-Face kills people all the time and so does Penguin and Professor Pig like warps their minds and turns it to mush so they can never go back to who they were before, a fate worse than death if you ask me. The Riddler kills people and like, I believe they can be rehabilitated. So I'm going to sacrifice hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people right now and in the future because gosh golly, I really believe the Joker deserves a second chance. Like that's, that's what's so crazy about him. That's what's so crazy about Batman. Batman is actually a worse killer than anybody else in Gotham, if only by his inaction. And so, so from here, like it's, it's kind of wonky because like he toys with that. He's like, well, I could kill him and everything would be okay. And in the middle of this, like once he defeats him, he like Professor Pig jumps up and then just starts walking. And, and, and it's, it's, it's almost kind of like this crazy, insane experience, right? Like it really is absolute madness. Madness because like this whole thing, this this whole entire comic takes place over the span of maybe 10 minutes. And so that's why it's kind of wild is because it's like, okay, like why do, why like, like Batman kind of looks around and says, why do I not have any weapons? Why can I not hear Professor Pig talk? What's going on? Like, where am I? How did I get in here? And how do I get out? Because technically speaking, it's a room with no doors. And so it's like, okay, like, like this is wild because of course where Batman basically tackles him and then goes to take him out and then like tries to beat him up. At the same time, Batman's trying to look for a way to escape from this place, look for a way to like, get out of here you know like what is going on with all this and so ultimately like he basically stops right like the whole conflict stops batman looks at professor pig and he says how do i get out of here like like how did i get here and how do i get out and then professor pig kind of looks at him for a second does this little riddle and then takes his mask off and it's damian wayne and so it's kind of like okay damian looks at him and then walks away and batman's just left there this thing is a descent into madness it's, it's absolutely insane but that's what's so cool is because this this little bit of a story this you know the really the second part of like this nightmares arc while it does seem kind of bonkers and it does seem seem crazy it really is kind of like the the nature of batman encapsulated right because batman is technically a crazy guy what human being would of sound mind of like clear and sound mind would say my city's gone to pot i know what'll fix it i will dress as a bat and beat up people in the middle of the night that will fix everything like like who what rational human being would think that right i mean that's crazy talk but like you expect that from a guy who is in effect crazy and that's why i say the batman like this story in particular like really hits the nature of batman on the head because batman's a crazy person living in a crazy city and it's one of those arguments where it's, it's kind of like you can't actually defeat someone like if an enemy is bad enough you can never truly defeat them unless you become as bad as them otherwise again you're only ever a half measure you're only ever kind of like keeping them at bay for a short amount of time but the reality is that like there are some foes out there there are some some enemies out there the only way you can ever really defeat them is to just kill them to to eliminate them entirely it's the only way to keep the world safe from them otherwise they will keep coming back over and over and over and over again i mean after all if batman was a successful hero there would be no joker there would be no two-face there would be no penguin there'd be no riddler there'd be no professor pig there'd be no poison ivy presumably no Catwoman. like there would be none of those none of those villains that were out there because batman would have dealt with them right off the bat and that's kind of the funny thing is batman sort of fights with himself right he's kind of like you know i need to take the high ground well batman the high ground don't work it doesn't work in this in this instance because if it did you would have been successful but it doesn't and so you're not and so it's 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 kind of funny that's one of the things i always sort of found weird about batman is like how many chances are you going to give to people like how many instances are you going to to kind of like sacrifice innocent people because you really believe that that villain could be rehabilitated there kind of has to be a cutoff point where you say okay fine we've given you enough chances now you got to go like we're just going to cut your head off and be done with it right even then the joker would still find some way to return i have no idea but with that being said guys we're going to bring this video to an end <laughs> i've rambled long enough if you are new here to Comments Explained, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.